I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on relative velocity. We'll try to understand the concepts involved when working with questions based on relative velocity. So I've taken up one particular example where a motorboat is there and we need to land at the lighthouse shown here. We are going to assume that the two banks of the river are parallel speed of the motorboat is constant and the river is also flowing at a constant rate. We'll have three different scenarios to discuss. Now let's go through the question. Anil is driving a motorboat which has a speed of 20 kilometers per hour in still water and wants to reach the lighthouse directly across. The river is two kilometer wide and flows at six kilometers per hour in this area. We'll discuss three different cases. Case one, if he heads directly across, how far downstream from the lighthouse will he land and how long will it take? Case two, if he needs to land directly across at the lighthouse, in what direction should he head? What is the resultant velocity of the boat? And case three is, if he aims upstream at an angle of 70 degrees with the bank, then how far will he land from the lighthouse? Now, let us try to understand the very basic concept of relative velocity, and then we'll take up all the three cases one by one. When we say that Anil is driving a motorboat with a speed of 20 kilometers per hour in still water, it means what? It means that the velocity of the boat, we write like this, velocity of the boat with respect to water is equal to 20 kilometers per hour, right? He is driving in the water, in the still water, so with reference to his surroundings, which is the water, the relative speed is 20 kilometers per hour. So whenever we have the speed in still water, it really means it is speed of boat with respect to water. Okay. Then the second statement here is that the river is two kilometer wide and flows at six kilometers per hour. So the velocity of the water right in the river is always with reference to the ground and that is six kilometers per hour. Now these two velocities think like this, that this is the river, right? This is the river. And let us see that from this point, Anil is driving in this direction. Right. So, so that velocity he is driving in this direction will be termed as boat with respect to water equals to 20 in kilometers per hour. Perfect. Now, the water is flowing down the stream, right? So that is going to push the boat downwards. And this velocity is the velocity of the water with ground, right? So water is flowing against the ground. So that is how if a person is standing here on the ground, in that case, he is going to see this water flowing at that rate. Now the resultant of this will be that the boat lands here. So that becomes the resultant velocity Vr, which is combination of these two, correct? So, so what we get here is the resultant velocity Vr, which is equal to combination of velocity of the boat with respect to water plus velocity of water with respect to ground. So this resultant velocity is the speed which the person outside looks at the boat. So for the person, that is the speed with which the boat is moving. And therefore, we also refer to this as velocity of the boat with respect to ground. 
you get the idea so if you look into this equation the resultant velocity shown here boat with water water to ground gives me boat to ground does it make sense to you so that is the basic logic which is being followed to solve any relative velocity concept correct so this velocity is what a person outside on the ground visualizes right so this is the ground the shore so he will feel he or she that the boat is moving at that particular velocity that is the resultant velocity or the velocity of boat with ground so we'll keep that concept in mind while solving our questions that is one thing second in case one and two we have right triangles right so in case one and two we have right triangles so case one and two can be solved without sine law and cosine law in case three it is if he aims upstream at an angle of 70 degrees with the bank then how far will he land from the lighthouse now this case is a case which is not a right triangle so in this case we will use combination of cosine law and sine law you get the concept right so it is not necessary to always use sine and cosine law to solve relative velocity questions and we will see how uh, similar triangles and and primary trigonometric ratios in right triangle can help to solve most of the cases case 1 and 2 you will find will solve without sine law and cosine law so that's the beauty and i hope you get the concept now let's see the cases one by one let's try to understand how to solve case 1 the question is anil is driving a motorboat which has a speed of 20 kilometers per hour in still water and wants to reach the lighthouse directly across. The river is 2 km wide and flows at 6 km per hour in this area. Case 1. If he heads directly across, how far downstream from the lighthouse will he land and how long will it take? So for doing this, we'll actually sketch two diagrams. One is related to position the other one will be related to velocity right so we are actually talking about two different things correct now what is really happening here is that let's say anil starts from here and heads directly across perpendicular to the flow of the river to reach the lighthouse right so this is anil's position he wants to land up there however because of the water that stream is flowing and it will push him downwards. So effectively, he doesn't land at the lighthouse, but lands somewhere downstream, away from the lighthouse. So that becomes the situation. Now, in the given scenario, we know that the width of this river is 2 kilometers, right? So 2 kilometers. And what we really need to find here is how far did he land so that distance d that is one position right now if we look into the velocity part in that case the triangle is very similar rather exactly similar so that is the velocity with which anil is heading we call him is the velocity of boat with respect to water which is equal to 20 kilometers per hour however he is pushed down because of the river whose velocity is 6 kilometers per hour so and we'll call this as the as the velocity of water with respect to ground correct so he lands up and we don't know what the final related velocity is which we will be writing as velocity of board with respect to ground which we don't know but in this case we really want to find how long will it take so we need to find this 
and we need to find this distance also. So let's say this position here is the point B where Anil lands, right? So, so we need to find what AB is. That is also we need to find. So I hope the position is very clear. Now these two triangles you can say are similar triangles. So the concept here is to work with similar triangles. Similar triangles mean same ratios, perfect. And therefore solving this, comparing these two triangles, we need to find this distance. So we can say, well, distance D over two should be equal to this velocity which is 6 over 20. Does it make sense to you? So simple as that. Now just cross multiply, get your answer. So distance D is 2 times 6 over 20, which is this goes 10. So you have 0 0.6 and the units are of course kilometers. Correct? So we're working with kilometers per hour, all our units in kilometers and hours, right? So, so the units are in kilometers and these velocities are in kilometers per hour. Perfect. Okay, so we got one part. Well, it's a good idea to also find A, B, since we are going to use it later, correct? So let me write down what A, B is. So we got one answer, uh, which is he will land up. So we get one answer, let's say A, he lands 0 0.6 kilometer downstream. from lighthouse let me write l okay now we need to find also the time to find the time what should we do we have to find the velocity and the distance simple and then we are going to use our standard ratio which is distance speed and time correct so remember all these simple things nothing very complicated right so distance and speed we are saying as velocity and time correct so we need to find time so definitely time is distance over speed or velocity so we need to find both the things we don't know what this velocity is and we don't know what that distance is correct so let's first find the the distance use pythagorean theorem simple as that since we know this is a right triangle correct and we now know d which is 0.6 and so from here, we can write down that AB, the distance traveled, is actually equal to what? It is square root of, this is hypotenuse, so bigger than both the sides, right? So 2 square plus 0 0.6 square. Perfect. So let's figure this out. So we have square root of 2 square plus 0.6 square and that gives you in decimals let's write 2.088 okay so it is 2.088 kilometers correct so now we know the distance once you know the distance then how do you find the velocity well here also we could use Pythagorean theorem to find velocity, simple as that, right? So, so nothing great about it. So we'll find this velocity also using Pythagorean theorem, and this resultant velocity is square root of 20 square plus 6 square. Okay. So which is square root of 20 square plus 6 square, and that gives you in decimals 20. 0.88 okay that's a good number so we can also call it as a resultant velocity most of the time we refer to it as resultant velocity now what is the time taken so part b for us is to find the time and now let me again make a demarcation here to find the time so the time t will be equal to the distance which is 2.0 0.88 divided by 20.88 clearly it is equal to 0 0.1 hour correct multiplying by 60 we get 6 minutes perfect so part b is time taken will be 6 minutes 
does make sense to you. So we have solved case 1 without even using trigonometry. Do you see that part? Forget sine law and cosine law. So it could be so simple, you know, and that could be a question for a grade 10 student at times. I hope that helps. Now let's look into case 2. So the situation is exactly similar. Anil is driving a motorboat which has a speed of 20 kilometers per hour in still water and wants to reach lighthouse directly across the river. So we'll just draw one diagram now onwards to understand the situation. So the river is 2 kilometers wide and flows at 6 kilometers per hour in this area. If he needs to land directly across, that means this time Anil wants to start from here and really wants to land there at the lighthouse, right? So that is the scenario. So, so that is the position and Anil wants to land here. If he needs to land directly across at the lighthouse, in what direction should he head? What is the resultant velocity of the boat? So this now becomes the resultant velocity of the boat. You understand, right? This is what a person standing outside will see. Person will see that Anil lands here. Now he has to head in that direction, correct? So effectively, he's trying to go there, but the boat moves like this. The tip of the boat will actually always be at an angle, angle at which he started, right? So he heads in a direction. So the boat is in this direction, but it moves straight because it is being pushed by the river down so the so if he heads and is being pushed down to land here he has to actually head somewhere at an angle to this correct that is the whole idea that is the whole idea correct so this angle is what we need to figure out so you could actually find the angle with the bank or the angle here so any one of those angles could be found now since that is the speed and the direction in which he is moving relative to the ground, I mean the person outside will really see, uh, re uh, related to the ground it is a uh, VR, but with the water the speed is 20 kilometers per hour. So this is 20 kilometers per hour, right? And water is pushing it at 6 kilometers per hour. You understand this is related to water, this is related to ground, and that is related to ground. Perfect. That is how we are always looking at it. So let's try to figure out what is this angle. Now very clear, right? Sine theta will give you the angle. Correct? So, uh, so that is how you figure out, right? So the angles, we can write sine theta is equal to uh, 6 over 20. So theta is equals to sine inverse of 6 over 20, correct? And we can find the angle. So it's so simple as that. Shift sine inverse 6 divided by 20 bracket close equals to 17.457. 17.457 degrees, that is theta. We'll just round to 17.5 degrees. So that is the angle which he makes with the normal. Normally, in your answers, you'll be required to give this angle alpha with the bank. So we'll say this angle is alpha. So we say angle alpha is equal to 90 minus 17.5, which is equal to how much? Let's figure this out. So 90 minus 70.5 is equal to, in decimals, 19.5. Uh, Sorry, seven. I did it wrong. Okay, ninety minus seventeen point five is equal to, in decimals, seventy-two point five degrees. So it is seventy-two point five degrees, with the bank of river. Do you understand? So normally you are always giving it with the bank of the river, and it is always an acute angle. Remember. This should be an acute angle. So, so whatever we say normally is, uh, if he needs to land directly across the lighthouse, in what direction should he head? So direction. So that is the direction in which he is heading, right? Okay. With the bank. It is always the acute angle.
with the bank of river. So that is a note. If not, or you could say with the normal also. Anyway, what is the resultant velocity of the boat? That's the second part, right? So what do you think is the re resultant velocity? Again, simply use Pythagorean theorem, correct? So we get Pythagorean theorem. So the resultant velocity will be, now it is lesser than that, right? It's a smaller side. So it is going to be square root of 20 square minus 6 square square root. Okay. Let's figure this out. Square root of 20 square minus 6 square square root is decimal values 19.078, let's say 19.1 kilometers per hour. Correct? So that is how we get part 2. So we know the anil should head at an angle of approximately 72.5 to land up at the lighthouse correct clear now case 3 is slightly different we are saying that anil heads at a different angle waverly reach now we don't have a right triangle so we'll have to use sine law and cosine law to solve that case so now let's see the final part of this video uh, case 3 so i think case 3 was the case for which all of you were waiting now here we are Anil is driving a motorboat which has a speed of 20 km per hour in still water and wants to reach the lighthouse directly across the river. We'll again draw just one diagram now to solve. Now the river is 2 km wide and flows 6 km per hour in this area. If he aims upstream at an angle of 70 degrees with the bank, then how far he lands from the lighthouse. So let's take the position of Anil and the lighthouse. Let's say that is the position, correct? So we know now that they are right across. So Anil is here, the lighthouse is here. But Anil heads in a direction which is 70 degrees with the bank. So Anil heads in this direction, correct? So heads in this direction and we are given that the angle which is formed is... 70 degrees. Now where will he land? So water is definitely going to push him down closer to the lighthouse but he may may not reach L. He may overshoot. So there could be any case right. So at times we will also have a question did he land uh, above or downstream from lighthouse. That could also be a part of the question right. So depending on this angle he could land uh, you know, uh, towards shorter than lighthouse or he may shoot, right? So that those are the different cases. Okay. So we'll assume, we'll just make a diagram now, assume a situation and then we'll check with the final scenario. So let's assume that he lands somewhere there, right? So, so we call this as our final position. Is it okay? Now let's try to solve this question. Now, since Anil heads in this direction, right, so this becomes your velocity of the boat with respect to water, and that is 20. And that is the velocity of the water with respect to ground, and this is 6 kilometers. Correct. Now, if that is 70 degrees, do you have any angle here to work with? Well, you do see a Z pattern. Do you see a Z pattern? So this is your Z pattern. We are always assuming two parallel sides. So that angle has to be 70 degrees. Does it make sense to you? So we have 70 degrees angle right there. Since we have a situation where we know two sides, 20 and 6, with included angle. So we have a side angle side. So we can use cosine law. Is that clear? Perfect, right? So straight away we can use cosine law and we can find the third side which represents the resultant velocity for us, right? So this represents resultant velocity which we can find. So the resultant velocity Vr should be equal to square root of squares of these, add them up, which is 20 square plus 6 square and take away twice 20 times 6 times cos of the angle which is 70 degrees perfect so that gives you 
the resultant velocity. Neat, right? So we get what? We get 20 square plus 6 square minus 2 times 20 times 6 times cos of 70 degrees is equal to and we'll square root this. Square root our answer and it is equal to 18.812. 18.812. So that is the velocity in kilometers per hour. So we get our net velocity which is 18.812 kilometers per hour. Clear? Now, since we know the net velocity, we can actually now have a combination of angle opposite and the side. So that ratio is known to us. So we can now apply sine law. Do you see how we apply cosine and sine law to figure out? And with that, we'll try to figure out what is this angle. Correct? So let's call this angle as theta. Okay. So, so we say sine theta over the side opposite which is 6 equals to sine of 70 degrees over the side opposite vr which we just calculated 18.812 right so from here we can find what theta is so we can uh, we just cross multiply right so sine theta is 6 times sine of 70 degrees divided by 18.812 and we'll do the inverse to find the angle. Correct. So let's do it. So we have 6 times sine of 70 degrees. We are going to divide this by 18.812. So we get a number which is, uh, which is equal to 0 0.2997. So theta is sine inverse of 0 0.2997 which is so we'll just do shift inverse sign of our answer and this angle is 17.4 so we get this angle here as uh, equal to 17.4 correct so this angle is 17.4 4 for us right so we get this angle 17.4 now how does it help us okay so if you look into this triangle we are actually short of 90 degrees right so if it was 20 I would have made it 90 degrees perfect to L so that means the total angle which we are talking about which is this angle from here to here is how much so let's say that angle and we need to find what this angle is basically so let's say this angle is beta for us which is left so the angle beta is equal to 90 degrees since that is 90 degrees correct 90 degrees minus 70 degrees minus 17.44 correct so that gives us the angle which is that small acute angle left so let's figure this out so we'll just take from 90 uh, 70 which is 20 and then from there 17.44 right so that gives me decimals 2.56 so 2.56 is the angle here perfect now from this we can find the distance d since we know that the width of this river is 2 kilometers is it okay so now using tan so tan of 2.56 degrees should be equal to d over 2 or we know the distance d is equals to twice tan of 2.56 degrees good so let's find this out so we already have this angle here now we'll do tan of the angle tan of our answer equals to and multiply this by 2 which gives you in decimals 0 0.8 0 0.089 in kilometers right so let's multiply by 1000 so we know it is let's do times 1000 
to get meters, right? So it is 89, 89 meters. That's it. So it is just 89 meters away or 0, 0.0, very close. So you land very close as you can definitely see, right? And multiplying by 1000, just move decimal three places. It is 89 meters short. Do you see how we found it? So that is how you have to work with. So the essential part of solving relative velocity questions is to understand which velocity is what. So whenever we say velocity with, of the boat or person swimming in water, still water, so that is related to the water. When I say velocity of a boat, or velocity of a river, it is with respect to the ground and the resultant is for a person who is outside the ground, do you understand? At what speed does he really see things happening? So that is the resultant velocity, which we can also say, in this case, velocity of boat with respect to ground. Perfect. Well, so with that, I think you can solve any question based on related velocity, especially if we involve boat or water. Same conditions are also true when we say airplane and wind, same concepts, okay? So I hope that helps. Feel free to uh, post your questions and suggestions. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. And also share my videos with your friends. Thanks for watching and all the best.